Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you've ever watched any of my previous videos or been a part of my Twitch streams, you know that whenever I look into a new game, the first thing I look at is the team. I want to know everything about the teams and the developers. I want to know their previous works, how they are doing with the current project, are they interactive with the community, are they kind of being shady and hiding things from the community and keeping us in the dark, or are they open and honest about the progress of the game. Because honestly to me, I think that's what makes or breaks a game. It kind of gives me an idea of the future of the game. And during the time of getting the feel of different types of devs, I've kind of noticed there's three main types. There's those lazy devs that, you know, hype up a community, release the game, and kind of just let it dwindle away and let the player base dwindle away and kind of just shatter their hopes and dreams. Then there are those devs that uh, release a game and when they finally release the game, it's kind of half-assed. Uh, they lose a lot of the players, but they still release content or enough content to kind of keep a small player base going and kind of keep the game scraping by. Then there's those teams and developers that literally put everything they have into a game. And I can say without a doubt, one of those companies with those kind with that kind of team and with that kind of developer is Spotted Kiwi Interactive. I'm Minnie Mae and this is your game wrap up of Zero Survival. So Zero Survival is Spotted Kiwi Interactive's first game. The game has been in development for over around three years now and it just released in early access this week. So before I get into the early access release um, into too much detail and Zero Survival, I'm going to focus on the team that made the game at Spotted Kiwi Interactive because I just feel like they deserve this recognition. Firstly, the team is so small. It is amazing how much they have done and what they pulled off for such a small team. They have one developer and that developer is Joshua Harrington. If you guys don't know Josh, he is one of the most hardworking people I've met. He is constantly working on new content. And if he's not, you know, he's talking to the community in Discord. And if he's not doing that, he's in the game, getting a feel of the game from the player's perspective. He's just constantly in motion with the game. Other members of the team are Backy Back and Iced Yoshi. So Backy Back works with the partners and content creators. He is always there to answer our questions. And I'm sorry, I know I, answer, I ask a lot of questions. I am honestly surprised Backy Back and Yoshi haven't told me to go away with all my questions. But they've just, they're always there. They're they're always happy to answer, uh, be it a content creator, be it me and my thousand questions, or be it any member of the community or newcomer or prospective newcomer. And Yoshi, Ice Yoshi in Discord, is head of community management. So if you guys ever have a question about the game, or I know that during early access there were some issues with keys and with Exola, is that how you say it? I'm not too sure. Uh, he was working hard and getting those issues fixed. Uh, during the just before early access there was an issue with Steam not releasing the game Yoshi and Backy Back were talking to us in Discord saying hey this is what happened we're sorry like they were apologizing Yoshi helped into my stream was like hey this is what's happening I just want you to know and it was just so great how they went that extra mile to keep us informed with our, what was happening instead of just letting us sit there like die <laughs> when's this happening hey um, but no they're absolutely great and now to the newest member of the team who needs an introductory. First because he's new, um, most of you probably don't know him yet. Uh, but also because when I got into the early access, one of the first things I noticed is what he did. Um, if you were in my stream, you heard me squeal about the rusty cars. I know that sounds really weird, but it was the detail that I loved. It was just this added detail to the game that they had added to the early access, which really just threw me over the edge with the game. I think they released it just the right time. There was new ammunition box skins. There was just more detail to the game in general, and I absolutely love it. So the person to thank for that is M. Karan. I hope I said that right. I have a tendency to butcher names. But Karan, thank you so much. Like, I honestly loved your designs. And if you guys don't know, Karan was doing freelance work for Zera uh, late August in 2017. And he officially joined the team this February of this year. So welcome, Karan. You're a great addition to the team. And I cannot wait for your future works. Uh, I've got a little 
information on that. They are currently working on some buildings, some new uh, areas and points of interest. So I'm excited to see that all happen. So guys, keep your eyes out for new updates for the game. Moving on from the team, I'm going to focus now on the early access release. Firstly, I just want to say this was one of the first early access releases in a really long time where I actually was just over the top happy. There was no issues on my side. Like obviously they had their the, the early access bugs, which are just known as features. Uh, there was issues with the doors not opening. There was some cause where the when people left servers, they lost their loot they had on them. Um, but you know the team got on it instantly and they fixed it without any issues or any like delays so i was happy and even with the doors not working there was still so much to do with the game because like not all the loot was in houses there was roblox the military bases there was still the ai and obviously there was still the biggest enemy other players but other than those early access features the game went off without a hitch it was so optimized the servers held there was no crashing no issues I, I was just a happy chappy and I think a lot of players were too. Now on to some of the game aspects. So if you guys don't know, Zero Survival is a looter shooter open world survival. So, but there's not much emphasis on the, like the crafting and building side of it. It's more like just like running around, looting, keeping up your inventory, uh, finding other players, keep fighting off the AI and surviving. There is a crafting aspect, but it's very small. There's like the drones, your health packs and bandages. You can make explosives and I'm sure they will add more stuff that goes along, but mostly it's just the looter shooter and what a great looter shooter it is. Honestly, for early access, there's enough to do to keep you entertained and those things are uh, there's events. So if you guys look on the map while well, during the video, you see these like white fists on the map. Uh, those are the events so what happens is there's this kind of like encampment in the foresty areas where they, it's surrounded by these AIs it's just the normal AI robots and not any of the special ones and you just gotta get rid of them and once they're all gone supply will, supplies will drop so it used to actually be four supply crates but now it's down to two uh, and I noticed the encampments itself has also changed they used to have four towers surrounding them but now there's only two so it kind of makes it easier for enemy teams to roll up and raid the encampment while you're waiting for the very long drop of the storage uh, of the supply crates. They do take a while to fall, so be prepared for raiders to come and hit you. So if you weren't one for the AI or PVE events, there was other things to do, like obviously the looting. So the houses were really good um, for more of the food and basic supplies. I did notice the loot table did change during the early access, and I can understand why, because the best place for looting when you get into the game is definitely the roadblocks if you guys notice on the map there's these red things along the mo uh the road and those are the roadblocks i honestly found one of the best i honestly found some of the best loot there i found ars uh tier 3 helmets heavy armor tons of ammo deagles um so definitely check those spots if you're just landing into the game other great places for loot is uh for high tier loot is the military base and airport but just be warned if you're gonna go hit those areas make sure you have ammo because it's not just the regular ai they also have the explosive ai which are the yellow robots which um if they get close to you will and if you hit them they will also just know if you do give them headshots and blow their head off they still go now to the biggest, nastiest AI out there, likely there's not a lot of them, is the super. It is the super tall, hence the name, silver AI. It takes like nearly two, three clips to bring it down. Uh, it makes sure it's all headshots, headshots only. But when you bring down a super, it drops such beautiful loot. I have had AKs, I've had ARs, I've had keys, I've had tons of ammo. So definitely the super is really good enemy to kill for loot high tier loot there's one at the military base but at the military base it is also overrun by other ai like the yellow ones and the regular ones and then at the airport there's also a super there but i'm not too sure if it's one or two i just recall it being one during the alpha i don't think i ever got to the airport during the early access yet um but there's a lot of explosive ones and normal ai so the military base and the airport are definitely good places for the pve looting when there is no events going on also just so you know if there is no i'm not sure if this is supposed to happen but when there is no event going on those camps those encampments are still lootable there is loot there and honestly good loot so definitely hit those up if you're running around and there's no event but just be warned just because there's no event and there's no ai 
there could be other players. There's been countless of times I ran into the encampment and got a face full of bullets. And that's the looter side of the game. Now onto the shooter side. So before I even get into that, I just want you guys to know that the game is first person and third person by pressing C. And if you press your alt key, you can also go between different shoulders. And I think that's awesome. You know, if I'm like trying to sneak around a corner, I kind of want to move my crosshair to my different shoulders so I can get around it better and see better with it. Um, I don't tend to use first person in the game unless I'm looking down my red dot or holograph because there's a far off distant target. But other than that, I just stick to third person. So if you are one of those players that want to get some PvP action in, honestly the best place for it is Redsville. I don't know what it is about Redsville, maybe it's because it's the biggest city, maybe because that's where the bombings happen and it's just way hardcore intense, but that is where a lot of PvP occurs. So if that is what you're looking for, definitely make your way down to Redsville. Just be warned though, if you're getting in there too late, it is a great place for sniping. If people get their hands on a VSS, one of the ray guns, and set up on one of the tall buildings, they have such clear sight on players running through the town. Another fair warning is if you do kill someone in the game, you do get kind of a hostile title for a few minutes. This title prevents you from safely being in the settlement. You're still allowed to use the global inventory, but if you walk into that settlement and another player is in there and they see that your name is red and that you're a hostile, they have free range to shoot you. They will not get penalized, they will not get a hostile title because they killed another hostile. So it's kind of like walking into a settlement with that hostile, with that big red name, is kind of having like a big target on your back. So just a fair warning, I've done it before, I kind of like kill someone, I forget about my time, I run into the settlement to put away the loot I just collected and I run into, once again, a face full of bullets. But I do enjoy the PvP side of it. I try to not, I, I'm not the type of gamer that sets on being PvE or sets on PvP. I kind of go with what the situation asks for. So if I get into a situation where yeah, I have to kill someone because they're in my way or they're just a threat to me, then yes, I will try my best to kill them before they kill me. But I just try to stick to myself, run around, get some loot, do some of the events. I normally run around with the team. And honestly, I think you should too. In Zero Survival, it is very team heavy. A lot of people group up. A lot of you will run into a lot of teams. So if you do end up killing someone, I do suggest some caution. Make sure you check the area before you go loot because if they have teammates or three, you will see them and they will come and get you. But back to the actual gunplay in that. I love it. It's smooth. Uh, I had to play around with my gun sensitivity. It took me. I still struggle with getting it right, but that's just because I'm going from an FPS like CSGO to uh, a more slow tactical shooter where it's not it's more like spontaneous fighting than actual looking out for going to kill someone. So the map for the game is pretty big it's not huge but it, it is a pretty decent sized map you know it does take a while to go from one side to the other especially when you have to avoid AI and other players but there is ways to cross the map pretty quickly and pretty safely and those are Helicopter. So the helicopter right now is free to use, but when they implement the economy into the game in future patches, which is they had it for like a hundred, but I'm not sure if that's the same amount they got. I think it was just something they, if during the early access release, they had it implemented, but they hadn't re implemented the economy, so people couldn't actually use the helicopters, so they had to change that during the patch. So I'm not too sure if it will be a hundred, if we got a little sneak peek at that, or if they're going to change it once the economy has been implemented. But yeah, the, the helicopter is great. It takes you from one settlement to the other. And it's not a direct line. It kind of diverges along the map, like goes, varies, and wavers around. So if you want to go, like get in the helicopter and just see which way it goes and drop off. Or you need to get to across the map quicker because you have a teammate there or POIs over there. It's great safe travel. But just know there's only one helicopter and you have to be patient. And you can just drop out wherever you want. You kind of just jump out the plane with E. You get a parachute and you fall down, but just be careful when you fall down because this happened to me. I fell down and I met a face full of bullets because people sometimes look out for the helicopters and see where people fall out. Another way to get around the map is the quad bike. The quad bike is super rare. I It never used to be this rare. I used to know good locations for the quad, but now it doesn't seem to be there. Another thing about the quad bike is you might notice um, 
is it disappears, it despawns. So after a few moments of inactivity, it will just disappear. So someone can't just take off our bike and go hide it off in the map somewhere. It's just not going to be there when you get back. And that is the serious survival game wrap up. I tried to inform you as much as I could. Hopefully I did a good job. If you guys have any other questions though, any thing that I didn't cover and you want to know about or if you want to add any information about the video and about the game please put it in the comment section below I will post the zero discord in descriptions and I will also actually put the zero twitch link for so if you guys want to see some more gameplay you can just click that and go see the other content creators if you did like the video though please hit that like button and if you want to see more videos and more game wrap ups hit that sub button and I will see you guys in the next game wrap up.